You ready to see me horse cock this weight? Come on, one more. So it's so easy for us to get caught up in the now and not feel that pride for ourselves. We can maybe feel it momentarily, but we let it just go. It's so fleeting. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna take it up. We're not gonna go to 225 though. We're gonna go to 205. Eh, what the hell, why not? Let's do 225. Well, good morning. Welcome back, good to see you again. It is a beautiful morning here. 60 degrees out, humidity's down in the mid 80 percentage points, which is uh, a true gift these days when the humidity is usually around 95 to 98%. And we're lucky. Not only is it nice out, it's nice and quiet out. It's the weekend, start of the weekend. So we're looking forward to getting the day started, but getting this push workout started as well. It's gonna be a good push workout. I'm excited for it. As you can see from today's workout, we're not gonna be wasting any time jumping into this and we're gonna be throwing in some barbell based movements again. I realized I had been missing. Just doing a regular old barbell bench press. We've been doing the machine press here, the lever arm press, and that's been serving us very well. We've been enjoying that for quite some time, but it's been a minute since we've done any actual barbell bench pressing. So I wanna get back to doing that and pushing some weight with the barbell. We're gonna be incorporating in that flat bench, but we're also gonna be doing some seated overhead presses here in the rack. I tend to favor seated overhead presses because unfortunately with the ceiling clearance that I have here, when I get up in weight, the plates will end up hitting the rafters, unfortunately. Not the end of the world though, you know, when it comes to doing an overhead press, I'm not trying to train for a strict military press of any kind. There's certainly benefits to doing a standing overhead press, um, but I have always found that seated does really make me work more because as we're seated, we're not able to use our legs to drive that weight up at all. Now, of course, we can use our upper body and move it to get in the most favorable and advantageous position, but in a seated position, generally with most of the exercises, you're gonna have to have a bit more strict form overall period. All right, let's get started. We're gonna be starting with our Meadows Incline Lateral Raises. I've been struggling with those this last couple of weeks. I feel like I'm not getting as good of a stretch and contraction as I can be getting on them, and that the weight is probably too high. Now, I've only been doing 20 pounds, but it just still seems like it's a little bit too much to be bringing all the way up and then back down around on the side of our body. And you'll see that movement here in just a moment if you're not familiar with it. But I'm gonna try lowering it this week. Pretty substantially, actually. I'm gonna take it down to 15 pounds. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that's 25% of what I was doing. So we're gonna lower it down to 15 and see if I can just get a better movement overall. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the, the problem solver that we're hoping it's gonna be, or you know, if it's just an awkward movement and I'm gonna to continue to have to deal with it. We'll see. Let's not waste any more time. It's a beautiful morning, like I said, so let's get set up. Let's get started on these Meadows Incline Lateral Raises. I'll see you over there. That definitely felt a lot more sustainable than I remember 20 pounds being. I think I was able to really focus more on actually lifting with my shoulder. I'm not sure that I can even describe what exactly felt wrong about the 20 pounds, but that reduction in weight really allowed me to focus on using my delts and not incorporating whatever other muscles I wanted to help with it. I'm imagining I was getting some trap activation in there, some upper back activation in there. It just didn't feel right in previous weeks. And I had written that down in my notes. So reducing this down, again, 25% is pretty drastic, bringing this down to 15 pounds, but I'm really feeling it in my shoulder right now, certainly more than I have been in previous weeks. Really good change. Very happy with that. Let's see what happens again with the next 15. I think we're gonna keep the weight there. And on the last set, we'll just take it to a failure and do some mile reps or something like that. Yeah. 
yeah, definitely still feeling good with the 15 there. So on this last set, we're gonna take it all the way to our 15 reps, and then I'm gonna incorporate essentially partials where instead of bringing it up and around, all the way around, I'm just gonna be taking it up until I can't anymore. Don't wanna increase the weight. I don't feel like that's gonna produce any noticeable gains and my form will just reduce at this point. So let's see what happens here. Last set. Come on now. Oh boy. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh yeah. Now there's a shoulder pump we haven't felt in a while doing these. Oh. Other side. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Today's big focus is going to be keeping that back flat against the bench there. I have a tendency to arch my back a lot like I'm doing a flat bench, which is advantageous, but I want to make sure we're, we're, we're sticking in a true incline. If I'm arching my back, I'm going to be coming up into more of a flat position, flat bench position. I want to be at that incline. So I want to keep that lower back, especially flat against the back bench, not raised up flat there. But the trouble is going to be keeping those shoulders locked back while we do that. Because naturally, just with the way I've done my form over the years, I'll lock my shoulders back and then get into my arch to really lock them down on the bench. So today we're going to be focused on locking the shoulders back, keeping them there, but making sure we keep that lower back flat on this bench. That's going to be the, the key today to make sure we engage the upper pec as much as possible. <sighs> this music's not jiving with me. If you need a good playlist, scan that code right there. That's my EDM playlist. It's going to be nice and loud. Big EDM sounds for you. I think you're going to like it. Let me know what you think. All right, we're going to go for 12 on this. I I think we could take 185 here to 12 with some success, meaning getting actually a good stretch contraction, some good work in here. So we're going to take this real slow, but I also want to try to increase the weight on the next set too. So we'll see how 185 feels. If I can actually control it very well on the way down, we're definitely going to increase it. Maybe to 225. We'll see here. <sighs> Yeah, okay. I'm gonna take it up. We're not gonna go to 225 though. We're gonna go to 205. That was uh, nice. I like the pace. So I wanna stick close to that pace. 225, I don't think we're gonna be able to get anywhere near that pace. So 
Eh, what the hell? Why not? Let's do 225. I saw someone ask a question the other day. It's had me thinking a lot lately. And the question was really simple. Would past you be proud of where you're at right now? I've heard it asked before. It's not a new question. It's not any kind of revelation, mind-blowing. But it was a good reminder. Because I personally have been caught up in this cycle for a long time of what probably boils down to moving the goalpost. You know, you get to a goal, you get to an achievement, and you're proud, you're happy. I, you know, I can celebrate that. But very shortly after that, it's not good enough. It's not worthy of celebrating any longer. And, you know, to a degree, I think that's healthy. We don't want to be living in the past all the time. You know, I know people who still talk about high school like it's their greatest accomplishment. And I'm like, man, that's, that's really sad when you say it like that. You haven't had anything else that's been fun in the last... 10, 15 years, especially, come on. It's been a time of enormous Ugh. growth these last 10 years. I think there's a whole hell of a lot that we all could be proud of if we allow ourselves to be. Ugh. And I think if I went back to high school me, middle school me, that kid would be damn proud of what we've been able to get done, what we've been able to accomplish. It's so easy to forget that. Yeah. It's so easy to forget where you've been and where you're at now. Ugh. I mean, that's really what it boils down to, right? Where you were and where you've been able to take it. And I've been able to take this life to somewhere fantastic, great. It's a great life. We're doing great things. Yeah. We're doing amazing things. Come on, come and we're on. happy. We have a whole hell of a lot to be proud of, uh, happy of, and we're fulfilled. But sometimes when it gets tough, we get down on ourselves. And we start doing the what ifs. So if only I'd done this, the regrets, the, you know, when am I going to get this? When am I going to get that thing that I wanted? Uh. Yeah. I'm like a Zercher carry. Get that weight back up. All right, one more of these. Total failure here. Take it to where we can, then do some partials. Let's use these safeties, come on. Get that back flat. You know, when I first started out in my professional career, I had this idea in my head of what I was gonna be, what I was gonna achieve. And I didn't know any better, but I didn't realize how high of a bar I was setting for myself in my head. An almost impossibly high bar, I would say. There are going to be so few people who achieve what it is that I wanted to set out to achieve. And I had some mentors at the time who were like, um, I don't want to crush your hopes and dreams, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty lofty goal right there, man. And I didn't realize that at the time. I, I just, you know, I got pissed off. I was like, who the hell are you to tell me that I can't? Which, yeah, hey, that tenacity is great. That's fantastic. But at the same time, having those people around you who have the wisdom, who have the knowledge, and who have the grace to be able to tell you with a bit of a gentle touch, but also the harsh hit of reality sometimes, hey, um, that's an amazing goal. I don't want you to completely give up on it, but I also want you to have realistic expectations too so you're not disappointed. It's a powerful thing. And over these years, I've realized how right they were and how gentle they were even and not making me feel like I was just a complete moron for wanting to have something like that or think I could have something like that, but also being able to guide me to a much more realistic goal and say, why don't you aim for this? This fulfillment is going to make you a whole hell of a lot happier. And when I look back on all those moments, I, I think back to that kid I was. He'd be damn proud of all of them. He'd be damn proud of all of them. So it's so easy for us to get caught up in the now and not feel that pride for ourselves, that accomplishment that comes from doing something great. We can maybe feel it momentarily, but we let it just go. It's so fleeting. We let it leave and then it almost doesn't even count anymore. But whether it's here in the gym or in the professional world or in our personal lives, those moments can be so special. I look back on the footage that I took of myself, you know, five to 10 years ago when I was lifting, man, I'd be maxing out on a flat bench with 185 pounds. And I was really proud back then, and I should have been. And now here I am, repping out 185, 225 on the incline, no problem. It takes time to grow. It takes time to hit these things. And we've got to celebrate it when we accomplish it. But we also can't lose sight of all the work we did along the way and be proud of that too. Because that is worth celebrating. That is worth being proud of. That is not just living in the past. That is being able to reflect on all the great things you've done and being proud of them while still being able to look forward and say to yourself, I've done some great things. I've done some amazing things. 
but I still have a whole hell of a lot more that I want to get done too. Life is about lifelong learning, about continuously improving in all aspects of our life. And as long as we don't get complacent, we can continue to push forward for the things we want for ourselves while still being proud of where we've been, what we've done, and celebrating those moments too. All right, second set here. First one felt pretty darn good. I did two extra reps there. But then my shoulders started to feel like it was doing most of the work. So we'll see what happens on this one. As long as we get nice and deep, nice good stretch in there with a nice hold, we'll be pleased. I don't know. Felt good, but I feel like I'm having a problem loading those adequately. Like the progression that we're going to keep getting out of those dumbbell flies is just not there. I feel like we're really using a lot more of our shoulders. I don't know. If you get any tips, put them down in the comments. I feel like I'm using a lot more of my shoulders to lift it than I am my pecs. Maybe I just need to revert back to doing my fly setup here with uh, the, the cables. A little bit more work to set up, but we might be able to get a little bit lower and then a better pec contraction with those as well. Okay, let's do some uh, seated overhead press. All right, I was debating on jumping right into 135, but as slick Rick would say, Rick Boogs, we're not doing any pencil neck shit today. Let's just lift this damn weight. Come on, 135. Nice, hell yeah. Awesome, that felt great. Nice good shoulder activation too. Past me would definitely be damn proud of that. I remember when I thought 135 pound overhead press was just out of this world, impossible. Nope, no, we can do it. We're doing it. We're repping it out even, which is just absolutely freaking awesome. It's so easy to lose that perspective of what we're actually proud of, what we actually sought out to do when we started anything, especially this bodybuilding. It can do that to you though. You really do not see the progress you've made. Other people will recognize it in you, they'll see it. But you see yourself in such a negative light, a different light, it can be tough to keep that positive light shining on all the good work you've done. But it's there, you just gotta Keep using that light, keep shining it, keep being proud. All right, let's go, come on. Come on. We stopped, let that momentum stop. Come on, we got one more. You ready to see me horse cock this weight? All right, y'all. We got one more set of these to do and then some ab work as well. It's been a great workout. It's been a great reflection. It's been a good time to think and truly just look back and appreciate a little bit of the progress we've made over this time. Whether that's been just a couple hours, a couple days, or even a couple years. It's impressive when you're able to just reflect back on that, look at it for what it is, and acknowledge the greatness that you've achieved, how you've sought to get better every day. And while day to day, it might not seem like it, but over time you are climbing that mountain of progress, of achievement. Because we get caught in these little divots and we think we're sinking. We think we're not making progress, we're going down. But over the grand scheme of things, just 
just like the stock market rises over time, right? Day to day, might be a little rocky, but over time, we're gonna climb higher and higher. We're gonna achieve more, we're gonna do more. We're gonna be great. And we're gonna pass along that greatness, that wisdom. We're gonna be that waterfall that feeds the stream, feeds the rivers of everybody else that comes after us. Be the tree that provides shade when we're no longer there. That's the goal. Keep crushing it, keep doing amazing things. You're gonna do it. You're gonna accomplish everything you've sought out to do. And you're gonna be so damn proud of yourself in just a little bit of time. I believe in you. <sighs>